Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with older women's. Huge shout out to 3 Headed Dragon for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. The village of Kanoha and the Land of Fire was currently in a panic as it was currently on fire and being attacked by the mighty QB, many of Kanoha's ninja force were either fighting against the beast or trying to get the civilians to safety, many were dying in the process. The QB continued to destroy everything around it until it started to charge up its most powerful attack, the tailed beast bomb. Just as the attack was ready to be unleashed and would have been unleashed on the village if giant red arrowhead tip chains didn't suddenly wrap around the QB's head and forced it to unleash its attack harmlessly into the sky. Yuzumaki art. Adamantine ceiling chains. Yelled the voice that the chains were coming from. The chains were coming from a young man standing at 6'2 with lightly tanned skin, deep purple eyes, long crimson red hair that went to the center of his back, and a lean but muscular build. Her clothes he wore black steel toe combat boots, dark red cargo pants held up by his Kanoha headband, a short-sleeved black muscle shirt that showed off his rock-hard six-pack, a dark red leather jacket with a Yuzumaki swirl on each shoulder in black, and black fingerless gloves. This young man is Naruto Yuzumaki, Jonin of Kanoha and also known as Kanoha's Crimson Demon Wind. Naruto tightened his chain's hold on the QB and forced it down, but the QB continued to fight against its biddings. Damn it where is Minato, I can't hold the QB forever. Naruto thought to himself. As if hearing his thoughts a yellow flash appear next to Naruto showing a man with spiky blonde hair, peach skin, and striking blue eyes. He wore blue shinobi sandals, blue pants, a long-sleeved blue shirt under a forest green flak jacket, and a white coat with red flames at the bottom. This man is Minato Namikaze, Kano has yellow flash and the fourth Hokage. Well it's about time you showed up, did you finish off that guy that attacked? Asked Naruto. No, I managed to hurt him badly, but he got away in the end. Said Minato a little disappointed with himself for not finishing off the monster of a man that caused all of this. Don't worry about it, we'll find and deal with him later, now help me with this fox. Said Naruto. Minato nodded at this and used the Horatian to teleport himself, Naruto, and the QB out of the village. Some were outside the village. Appearing outside the village Naruto let the QB free of his chains as he jumped back next to Minato, and they both bit their thumbs before going through hand seals. Summoning Jutsu. Both Naruto and Minato yelled as they slammed their hands on the ground. Both summoners were engulfed in giant plums of smoke, when the smoke cleared Minato was standing on the head of a giant toad that was colored a dull rusty red with darker red markings on its body. It wore a dark blue coat with the kanji for Toad Boss on the back in red, had a smoker's pipe in its mouth, and a giant ninja blade strapped to its side. This was Gamabunta the boss of the Toad Summons. Naruto was standing on the head of a giant cheetah that was colored blood red with bright orange eyes and the traditional black spots and facial markings. It had silver-plated armor on its legs, underbelly, and shoulders, and it also had a giant ninja blade strapped to its right shoulder. This is Blur the boss of the cheetah summons. On the wall around the village. Here is in Saratobi, the third Hokage, was currently in his battle gear watching the battle that was about to start between the QB and two of Konoha's strongest shinobi. He was not alone as many of the shinobi forces were also watching, but were also ready to help if they were needed, but out of all of the shinobi watching two were watching more intensely than the rest. The first was a young Kakashi Hataki, Minato's last surviving student, and the other was a young Yugao Yuzuki, Naruto's apprentice. We shouldn't be here watching, we should be out there helping them said Kakashi as he clenched his fists. Calm yourself Kakashi, I know you want to help your sensei, but this battle will be beyond what you are capable of handling. Have faith that they will succeed. Said Hiruzen. Yugao clenched her fists as well, she wanted nothing more than to go out there and help her sensei. When her parents died he was the one that took her in, he cared for her, he trained her, he was her teacher, her friend, and ever since she learned that he was placed under the craw in order to rebuild the Uzumaki clan, she vowed that she would become his lover when she was older. She heard and understood what Lord Third was saying, but she didn't care she wanted to help Naruto-sama, her Naruto-sama, Yugao is the same age as Kakashi in this, meaning she's 15. The only thing really stopping her right right now is what she remembered her sensei saying to her when all of this started. Flashback. Yugao was doing some late night kinjutsu training so that she could impress her sensei the next time they trained together. Suddenly she felt the entire village shake and looked up only to see the QB standing in the village destroying everything in sight. She felt fear run through her whole body as she felt the power coming from the QB. Then a gust of wind blew by her, and her sensei appeared at her side looking a little tired. Yugao there you are, I'm glad you're okay. Said Naruto. Naruto-sama what's going on? Why is the QB unsealed? Asked Yugao with fear clear in her voice. 
Sure she was strong for her age and personally trained by Kanoha's Crimson Demon Wind, but she knew she was nowhere near ready for something like this. I'll explain everything later, I just came here to make sure my cute little apprentice was okay and to ask her a favor. Said Naruto while trying to hide his irritation of her calling him Sama. He learned a while ago that she wouldn't stop calling him that no matter what he said. Despite the situation Yugao still managed to blush at being called cute by her love interest. What favor Naruto-sama? Asked Yugao. I have to go and deal with a QB before it causes too much damage to the village, so I want you to go to my house and make sure my wife and unborn child are safe. Said Naruto. But Naruto-sama. Said Yugao before Naruto stopped her. I know you want to help you chan but you know how important family is to me, so I'm trusting you to take care of my family if anything happens to me. Please you chan I need you to do this for me. Said Naruto as he placed his hands on her shoulders and stared into her eyes. Deep purple stared into watery brown as Yuga found herself unable to deny her master's request. Hi Naruto-sama, I'll do as you ask, but you better come back or your wife and I won't forgive you. Said Yuga as she hugged her master tightly. Naruto returned the hug with a small smile on his face. Thank you you chan this means a lot to me. Said Naruto as he pulled back and looked her in the eyes. Also I know about your feelings for me. Said Naruto with a smirk on his face as he saw her turn tomato red. You're so cute when you blush you chan I'll tell you what since you're still so young if you still have feelings for me by the time you turn 17, then we'll go out on a date will that work for you? Asked Naruto. Yugao's blush got even deeper as she simply nodded, Naruto smiled at her before kissing her forehead and then disappeared in a burst of speed. Yugao stood there dazed for a few moments before going to check on her master's family, that with any luck, would become her family in the future. Flashback end. After checking and making sure her master's family were okay, she came here to help in any way she could and to make sure Naruto kept his promise to come back. I hate not being able to help, but I know Naruto-sama will be able to win, he never breaks a promise, and he's the strongest man I know. Yuga thought to herself. Alright Yandai Mei sama I know you can win. Cheered a random ninja. You got this Yuzumaki-sama, show that fox the power of the crimson demon wind. Yelled another ninja. Minato, 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 Minato. Cheered a group of ninja. Naruto, 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 Naruto. Cheered another group of ninja. But Naruto and Minato. So you've summoned me to fight the QB of all things. Said Gamma Bunta. Yes yeah, sorry about that Bunta, but I really need your help on this. Said Minato. Very well, I'll help out, but I'm gonna need a lot of sake after this. Said Gamma Bunta. Hello Naruto, so we're facing QB, I must say that you do keep things interesting. Said Blur. Well of course, after all it's only right that we get invited to all the best parties. Now let's show everyone what true speed is. Said Naruto. At that point Blur's body started to spark with lightning before he took off at high speed, running around the QB, while Gamma Bunta used his powerful legs to jump high into the air. Take this, water bullets. Yelled Gamma Bunta before he fired three large bullets of water from his mouth. QB used its tails to block the attack, but still became wet which was all a part of the plan, as Blur then rushed in and body checked the QB, and thanks to the lightning surrounding Blur's body, it caused extra damage. This attack combo actually caused the QB to roar in pain as it was sent back a bit, but the assault wasn't over yet as Naruto jumped off of Blur's head. Uzumaki art. Adamantine drill. Yelled Naruto as his chains came out of his back and formed a large drill that he sent into the QB's chest. This caused the QB to slide back a bit in pain before the attack stopped. Blur now. Yelled Naruto once he landed back on Blur. Right. Said Blur before both he and Naruto disappeared in a gust of wind. The wind picked up around QB before flashes of metal could be seen around it as it cried out in pain. Cheeto art. Cyclone of blades. Cried Blur he continued to attack for a full minute before appear back beside Gamma Bunta with his blade in his mouth. Minato, feel free to help out at any time. Yelled Naruto. Minato simply nodded before he used his famous oration in order to teleport to the QB and hit it in the eye with a Rasengan. Their attacks though only angered the QB more and it started to fight back even harder. The fight raged on with Naruto and Minato throwing everything they had at the QB, but it just kept on fighting, even with the two large summons attacking whenever they had the chance. Soon though it came down to Naruto using his chains to hold the QB in place. Minato we need a plan. Said Naruto. I already have one. Said Minato. Naruto looked behind him and saw Minato standing over a woman that was sitting on the ground. The woman in question had fair skin, ankle-length crimson red hair, purple eyes, and slender frame, and DD cup priests. She was currently wearing a green apron over a cream-colored dress. This woman is Kashina Yuzumaki Namikaze, Minato's wife, and she is also holding a newborn baby girl in her arms. Minato, what the fuck are Kashina and the baby doing here? Asked Naruto. 
We have to seal the QP into Naruko. Said Minato shocking Naruto and Kishina that that was what he wanted to do. Minato and Kishina had named the baby Naruko after a character from a book that Minato sensei, Jiraiya, had written. The character's name was Naruto ironic enough, but since they had a daughter instead of a boy they named the child Naruko, that's what Minato believed anyway. Kishina in fact agreed with the name decision because she wanted to name her child after Naruto, the person, since he had been such a huge part of her life. He had come over from Yuzu with her, he helped Minato rescue her from being kidnapped by Kumo Ninja, he beat up anyone he found making fun of her, he helped with her training, and so much more. Minato we are not doing that, the life of a Jinchuriki is a hard one, and I won't have my goddaughter subjected to that. Said Naruto. Minato had originally wanted Jiraiya to be the godfather, but Kishina shut that down as fast as Minato brought it up. He's right Minato-kun, we can't put Naruko through something like that, there has to be another way said Kishina since life was already rough for her, thanks to not being from the village and people making fun of her for her hair, it only became worse when they found out she was a Jinchuriki. If it wasn't for the friends she made and Naruto she wasn't sure what would have become of her. There is no other way. Said Minato. Yes there is, seal it in me or back into Kishina, but you are not sealing it into Naruko. Said Naruto. He remembered the things Kishina had to go through once the village found out she was a Jinchuriki, and he wasn't going to allow his goddaughter to go through that. But if I seal it into one of you you'll die, Kishina needs to be here for our daughter, and you have a wife and unborn child waiting for you. Said Minato. Minato-kun, why are you talking like you're not going to be there? Asked Kishina with fear in her voice. I'm going to use the Reaper Death Seal. It's the only seal strong enough to hold the QP said Minato. Minato-kun, no. Said Kishina. She knew what that seal could do and the cost of using it. You're a fucking idiot, how did you become Hokage? Asked Naruto as he started to struggle holding down the QB. You forget that Mito Yuzumaki was a full grown woman when she sealed the QB into herself, and she didn't use the Reaper Death Seal. Just use a different seal and then seal it into me, I'll survive just like Mito did. Said Naruto. We can be sure of that, Naruto, sealing the QB inside Naruko is our best bet. Said Minato. No. Either seal the QB into me or I let it go. Said Naruto. This shocked everyone, even the QB had stopped struggling at his words. Naruto you can't be serious. Said Minato. I'm beyond serious Minato. I don't care if our village doesn't have a Jinchuriki, as in Yuzumaki family is the most important thing to me, and I won't let my first official act as Naruko's godfather be sacrificing her. So either you seal the QB into me or I release my chains, and you teleport the QB away. Said Naruto with so much conviction in his eyes that both Minato and Kishina believed that he would really release the QB. This was one of the reasons Kishina admired Naruto so much, he was so willing to sacrifice himself before even thinking of allowing someone else to suffer if he could stop it. Minato was quiet for a few moments as he thought about what to do. It was in these moments that the QB attacked by sending one of its claws at baby Naruko. Kishina moved in order to protect Naruko and braced herself for the pain of being impaled by the QB, but the pain never came. She slowly opened her eyes and looked behind her to see what happened. She saw Minato standing there with a shocked expression on his face, looking further behind her she saw something that horrified her. Using a combination of his chains, shadow clones, and his own body Naruto had stopped the QB's claw, but it had impaled him through the right side of his chest. Naruto. Screamed Kishina. Naruto coughed up some blood, but gave Kishina a weak thumbs up, showing that he was in fact still alive. I'm sorry Naruto, but I have to think of the village, I am its Hokage after all. Said Minato as he moved through hand seals. Naruto was horrified by Minato's words, he was really going to sacrifice Naruko, just so the village could have a Jinchuriki. No. Dot Kishina. Dot run. Get Naruko. Dot away. From here. Said Naruto in a weakened voice. Kishina was in too much shock to do anything, the man she loved, married, and had a child with was going to turn said child in a Jinchuriki against her wishes. Meanwhile the man she had admired for much of her life was fighting to keep that from happening and had even taken a potentially fatal attack just to save her daughter. Unfortunately while in her shock Minato had taken Naruko from her and had prepared the sealing ritual. Ninja art. Reaper death seal. Said Minato as the Shinigami appeared behind him. Minato stop, just seal it into me. The village will have its Jinchuriki and Naruko will have a normal life. Said Naruto. I'm sorry Naruto, but this must be done, just have faith in the village said Minato. Minato, don't you dare. Yelled Naruto. Naruto's cry fell on deaf ears as Minato proceeded to seal the QB into Naruko, but then something strange happened. Instead of taking Minato's soul the Shinigami simply sealed the QB then left. With the QB gone Naruto's chains disappeared and he fell onto his front and started to bleed out. Back in the village. 
The moment they saw the QB disappear the ninja started to cheer thinking their heroes had won. Hiruzen and a few other ninja including Kakashi and Yugao took off in order to find Minato and Naruto. When they got to the area they found Kashina looking over her baby, Minato leaning against a rock, and Naruto laying in a pool of his own blood with a hole in his chest. Naruto-sama. Yelled Yugao as she ran to him while Kakashi went to Minato and Hiruzen went to Kashina. Kashina are you alright? Asked Hiruzen. I'm fine, but what about Naruto? Asked Kashina. I don't dot said Hiruzen before he was interrupted. Lord third, Naruto-sama has a pulse. Yelled Yugao. That Naruto, Kashina, and the baby to the hospital now said Hiruzen. The ninja moved to do as they were told while Hiruzen and Kakashi stayed with Minato. Minato, what happened? Asked Hiruzen. Don't worry about it Lord Third, the important thing is that the village is safe. Said Minato. I see. Said Hiruzen. Later at the hospital. Minato, Hiruzen, Kakashi, Yugao, and many other people were currently sitting in the waiting room of Kanoha General Hospital, waiting for word on the condition of Naruto. They had already been told that Kashina and baby Naruko were okay and just needed rest, but things were still unsure when concerning Naruto. Yugao actually wasn't sitting and was in fact pacing back and forth with worry for her sensei, sure he had been hurt before, but this time the injury was caused by the QP of all things. The rest of the people there were either ninja or civilians that wanted to know the condition of one of their heroes. Suddenly though the crowd of people started to part and sound of a woman's frantic voice could be heard. That out of my way I have to find my husband. Move I need to see him. Screamed the woman. Yugao instantly recognized the voice and wondered how she knew to come here, but then became worried as the woman was in no condition to be moving as frantically as she no doubt was. The woman finally made her way to the front of the crowd. She was a beautiful woman standing at 5'8 with fair skin, shoulder-length pink hair with a single bang that hung down in front of her face, green eyes, a large round stomach, showing that she was at the very least 8 months pregnant, a thick juicy fass, and swollen frees that were 1 C cup, but were now D cup, thanks to the milk they were now holding. Her clothes she is wearing a grey dress with 3 red circles on the back, and a Yuzumaki swirl on the front over her heart, baggy dark pink pants, and blue sandals. This woman is Mibuki Yuzumaki, Naruto's wife and the mother of their unborn child, and currently she has tears running non-stop down her face. Yugao was the first to run up to Mibuki. Mibuki-sama what are you doing here, what's wrong? Asked Yugao. This was her sensei's wife so of course Yugo was very respectful to her. I heard rumors that my Naruto-kun was dead so I rushed down here to be sure, now where is my Naruto-kun, where is my husband? Asked Mibuki. Calm down Mibuki-san and talk to us. Now how did you hear rumors regarding Naruto? Asked Hiruzen. Are you kidding? Pretty much the whole village is either cheering that the QB was defeated or mourning because Naruto-kun was killed. Said Mibuki. If it's really that bad then I better get out there and keep order, I'll take some Anbu with me, just in case things get out of hand. Said Minato heading off. I'll come with you sensei. Said Kakashi following Minato. Mibuki didn't care about any of that and turned back to Hiruzen. Please Lord Third, tell me the rumors aren't true, tell me my husband isn't dead. Said Mibuki. Hiruzen sighed at this as he knew what he was about to tell her was not what she wanted to hear. Mibuki-san please calm yourself and sit down, Naruto wouldn't want you going into premature labor due to you stressing over him. Said Hiruzen. At his words Mibuki held her stomach and thought about her baby, realizing he was right she took a few deep breaths as she sat down. Yugao quickly sat beside her and held her hand in order to help comfort Mibuki and herself. Mibuki smiled at Yugao, the girl was always a big help to her and Naruto around the house. When she became pregnant to the point of needing help doing things around the house, whenever Naruto couldn't be home thanks to having a solo mission Yugao was usually the one that he would put in charge of making sure she was taken care of. Are you calm now Mibuki-san? Asked Hiruzen. Yes I'm calm now, please tell me about my husband. Said Mibuki. Very well, the truth is we don't know what Naruto's condition is right now. During the battle with the QB Naruto was gravely injured, and I had him rushed here for treatment when I made it to the scene. Said Hiruzen. At this point Mibuki used her free hand to cover her mouth, as fresh tears started to pour down her face again. Have faith Mibuki-sama. Naruto-sama is strong and he loves you very much, he won't let something like this keep him away from you and his unborn child. Said Yugao. While she may have been worried she still had faith in her sensei. You're right, thank you Yugao. Said Mibuki with a small smile. You know I didn't even tell Naruto-kun the sex of our baby. Said Mibuki. How did you forget to tell him that? Asked Hiruzen and Yugao at the same time. Hey we've been busy, Naruto with his missions and training, not to mention my backaches, cravings, mood swings, and aching feet. I just forgot. Said Mibuki. So what are you having Mibuki-sama? Asked Yugao. We're having a girl. Said Mibuki with a smile. 
A few minutes later the doors to the emergency area of the hospital opens and out walks a woman. The woman in question was beautiful with soft white skin, honey brown eyes, blonde hair done in two pigtails hanging down her back, a diamond mark in the middle of her forehead, GG cup priests, a narrow waist, wide hips, thick eyes, long legs, and a round ass. Her clothes she wore a white doctor's coat, under that is a sleeveless grey kimono style blouse that showed a great deal of cleavage, dark blue pants, and black strappy sandals with high heels. This woman is Tsunade Senju, the best medic in world and well known as the world's strongest kanoichi. Tsunade, do you have any news? Asked Hiruzen. Yes, sensei. I'll be honest with you as I can see Mibuki is very worried, Naruto was in terrible shape when he was brought in as he had lost a lot of blood. It was touch and go for a while, but he pulled through and is resting now. Said Tsunade with a smile. She was extremely worried when Naruto was brought in with a hole in his chest, she had immediately gotten to work on him as she couldn't bear to lose him. Tsunade had already lost her little brother and her boyfriend in the Third Shinobi World War and was ready to give up on the ninja life and leave the village, but then she remembered that she still had family in the village, in the form of Naruto and Kishina, since she was part Uzumaki. It was thanks to them that she got through a dark time in her life, and she didn't want to lose either of them. Oh thank Kami. Said Mibuki. The ninja and civilians around cheered at the news, and the ones that were only there to find out about Naruto, quickly ran out in order to tell the rest of the village that Naruto was in fact still alive. Can either Naruto or Kishina have visitors at this time? Asked Hiruzen. Sure, I even have them in the same room though I would suggest only you, Yugao and Mabuki go see them as of course I'll be there, and I have Shizune looking after the both of them, and any more people might be overwhelming. Said Tsunade. They all nodded at this and moved to go see the two redeeds. Naruto's in Kishina's room. Naruto lay in a hospital bed with only his pants on as his shoes were taken off, and his upper torso was wrapped in bandages with an IV in his arm. Looking to his right he saw a woman of average height with fair skin, black eyes, shoulder-length straight black hair with bangs that cover her ears and frame her face, a slender frame, cup priests, toned legs, and a plump ass. She wore a long black kimono with a white trim, held closed by a light purple obi, and black sandals with a low heel. This woman is Shizune Kato, Tsunade's apprentice and Naruto's and Kishina's current nurse. On the other side of Shizune Naruto could see Kishina holding her baby who was wrapped in a pink blanket and smiling lovingly at her child, Naruto couldn't see the child due to the blanket. Thanks for taking care of us Shizu-chan. Said Naruto. Oh you're welcome Naruto-kun, but you don't have to thank me. Said Shizune with a light blush on her cheeks. It was at that point that the door opened and Tsunade, Hiruzen, Mabuki and Yugao all came into the room. As soon as Mabuki saw Naruto she immediately ran over to him and hugged him. Tightly. Aya, Mebu-chan, please let go. Cried Naruto as great pain shot through his body, why did his wife have to have such unnatural strength? Sorry Naru-kun, but I was so worried about you. Said Mibuki with tears of joy running down her face as she loosened her grip on him, but didn't let him go. I'm happy to see that you're okay Naruto-sama. Said Yugao. I'm pretty sure we're all happy that both of you are okay. Said Hiruzen. Where's Minato? Asked Kishina, not noticing that she didn't add the kun suffix to his name. The village is apparently going crazy over the defeat of the QB and Naruto's supposed death, so Minato went to go calm everything down. Said Hiruzen. Oh. Okay that good, I'm actually glad he's not here right now. Said Kishina shocking everyone but Naruto who was also glad Minato wasn't there. Kishina, what would have you say something like that? Asked Hiruzen. Kishina then explained everything that from being attacked by a masked man calling himself Madara Chihet to the QB ceiling and got different reactions from everyone. Tsunade was pissed, Shizune, Yugao, and Mibuki were sad, and Hiruzen simply sighed in disappointment. It's decisions like that this that prove you would have made an excellent Hokage Naruto, why didn't take the mantle when I offered it to you? Asked Hiruzen. Naruto had been the first person Hiruzen had asked to take the seat of Hokage, but he had turned it down, saying that now wasn't the best time for him to take that kind of job. After Naruto turned him down, he only had three options left, which were Tsunade, Minato, and Orochimaru. Tsunade turned him down as well, saying that her work in the hospital was too important, and he actually agreed with her about that, that only left him Minato and Orochimaru, and he sure as hell wasn't going to ask Orochimaru. Oh come on old man don't tell me you haven't figured out why I turned you down. I'm about to be a father in a short time, and being Hokage would take away time that I could be spending with my wife and newborn. Maybe in the future I'll become Hokage, but for now I need to be with my family. Said Naruto while rubbing Mibuki's stomach and feeling the baby kick. Everyone smiled seeing this as they all knew Naruto was really looking forward to being a father. Like I said, you would have been an excellent Hokage. Said Hiruzen. Hey Kishina, can I see Naruko now? Asked Naruto. 
Kishina simply nodded and moved the blanket some so that Naruto could see the baby. Baby Naruko had pink skin like all newborns, a small tuft of blonde hair on her head, and three whisker marks on each cheek. She's beautiful Kishina, but now I wish I knew what the sex of my baby was, so I could finally start using one of the names Mebu-chan and I picked out. Said Naruto. Oh, what names did you and Mabuki-sama pick out Naruto-sama? Asked Yugao. If it's a boy we chose Arashi and if it's a girl we chose Sakura. Said Naruto. I think it's time you told him Mabuki. Said Tsunade. You're right. Said Mabuki as she placed her hand over Naruto's which was still on her stomach. Naruto, you may officially call our baby Sakura Yuzumaki. Said Mabuki with a smile. Naruto's eyes widened at this, but he smiled widely before shifting himself a bit in order to kiss Mabuki's stomach. I'm sure she'll be just as beautiful as her mother. Said Naruto. Sixteen years later. It was early morning in Konoha, and currently Naruto was fully dressed while standing in the doorway to his backyard and watching three young adults train hard. The first young adult was his own daughter Sakura Yuzumaki. Sakura was a beautiful young woman with fair skin, bright green eyes, her long hair was unique as it started off as pink at the top and then became darker as it went down until it became crimson red at the ends which were at her ass, her forehead was a bit wider than average, she had a slim but athletic build, nicely toned legs, wide hips, a plump ass, and cup wrists. Her clothes she wore knee-high black kanoichi boots, black short tights under a thigh-length dark red sleeveless dress that had the Yuzumaki swirl over her heart and the Hirono clan symbol on the back and black fingerless gloves. She wore her Kanoha headband on her right bicep. Naruto smiled as he watched his daughter train as he remembered his time raising her. The day Sakura was born Naruto couldn't have been happier, he completely ignored the fact that Mabuki had broken every bone in his hand while she was pushing their daughter out. Lucky for him Tsunade was easily able to heal his hand. Growing up Sakura was always a very smart and happy child, her personality was also the perfect mix of her mother's and his own. He remembered that on her first day in the academy he was called because she had gotten in trouble. Apparently some boys were picking on her for her unique hair coloring and her forehead, and in retaliation, Sakura had beat the boys up. She had definitely gotten the Yuzumaki temper and her mother's crazy strength. As she got older Naruto trained her in seals which she took to easily, to jutsu, kinjutsu, a couple ninjutsu, and he taught her how to use her adamantine chakra chains. He also started to become a rather scary father, simply because as Sakura grew, she became one of the most desired young kinoichi in her class, Naruto had lost count of how many boys he had scared off. Looking at the second young adult which was also a young woman, Naruko Yuzumaki Namikaze. Naruko was beautiful young woman with lightly tanned skin, bright blue eyes, long blonde hair done in twin pigtails, three whisker-like marks on each cheek, an athletic but feminine build, long legs, thick thighs wide hips, a round ass, and DD cup wrists. Her clothes she wore knee-high black kanoichi sandals, a knee-length burnt orange skirt with a slit on the side and black tights underneath, a black short-sleeved top that strained against her chest, and a red leather jacket that says foxy lady on the back in black. She wore her kanoha headband around her waist like a belt. Naruto frowned a bit as he thought about his goddaughter, her life was hard because her father was a fool. Minato had announced to the whole village that he had sealed the QB into Naruko, Naruto really wanted to punch Minato in the face for telling a bunch of scared and grieving people that the monster that had killed a lot of their loved ones was now inside of a small helpless child. The day after that Kanoha held a mass funeral for everyone that had died during the attack and Naruto, with the help of his wife, was able to attend and give a speech. He told everyone that he was sorry for their loss as he understood how it felt to lose the ones you love, he told them to remain strong and to carry their lost loved ones in their hearts, and most importantly, he told them how sealing worked and that Naruko wasn't the QB. Naruto saw that his words had reached a good number of people, but an even greater number had seemed to tune him out when he started to talk about sealing. Over time Naruto not only cared for his wife and baby Sakura, but he also went to check on Kishina and Naruko from time to time. He became extremely pissed when he had found Naruko being beaten by some civilians at age 3, Naruto quickly saved her, then took her to Tsunade in order to be healed of her injuries. When Kishina showed up Naruto talked to her about the beating and Kishina was horrified, she told Naruto that the civilians and even some ninjas would glare and even insult Naruko, but they had never been bold enough to actually attack the child. From then on Naruto made it his mission to protect Naruko, it got to the point that he checked on her twice a day, and when he wasn't able to do it due to being out on missions he had Mibuki do it since she was a former Kanoichi. While this ring of protection Naruko had around her now helped there were still times Naruko was on her own and would get attacked. Naruto and Kishina had gone to Minato multiple times about this, but Naruto had lost all faith in Minato when the man had the nerve to say that the attacks on Naruko was necessary and that as Hokage he couldn't show favoritism. 
Minato's and Naruto's friendship had died that day with no chance of being brought back. Things really reached a breaking point when at six years old Naruto had saved Naruko from being raped by four civilians and two ninjas. After saving her Naruko wouldn't stop crying as she clung to Naruto while pleading for him to never leave her. An hour later Naruto had pretty much forced a council meeting where he brought up an old law where the heir of one clan could stay with another clan if they didn't feel safe with their own clan. Kishina was heartbroken as she saw this as Naruto trying to take her child, she told him that only a clan head could take in another clan's heir. Naruto reminded her that he became the Uzumaki clan head when she married Minato and took the Namikaze name rather than Minato, taking the Uzumaki name. Kishina then became devastated when she heard her own daughter admit to everyone that she didn't feel safe at home and wanted to stay with Naruto and Mipyuki. Ever since then Naruko has lived and trained with Naruto and Mipyuki, with Kishina visiting every day to see her daughter, Naruto told her he had no problem allowing Naruko to move back in with her, but he also told Kishina to get Minato to pull his head out of his ass before that could happen. Looking at the last young adult training in his backyard, a young man named Sasuke Cha. Sasuke had pale skin, black eyes, and black hair with a blue tint that was shaped like a duck's ass. Naruto had tried many times to get Sasuke to change his hairstyle, but the kid refused. For clothes he wore black combat boots, white cargo pants, a black sleeveless muscle shirt with the Ichiha crest on the back, a dark blue leather jacket with the Ichiha crest on the back, and his Konoha headband tied around his forehead. Naruto frowned as he thought about how he became more involved in the boy's life. He had been on his way to visit the boy's mother Makoto, since she and him had been friends since the academy, though he hated her husband. While on his way there he got the feeling that something was off, this worried him because whenever he got feelings like that it meant something bad was happening. He made his way the Ichiha compound as fast as possible and was horrified to see the bodies of many dead Ichiha, his horror lasted only a second before he ran off to find Makoto. Naruto arrived at the clan head house just in time to save Makoto from being killed by her eldest son Itachi, Naruto counted himself lucky for this because Sasuke was there and had apparently seen Itachi kill their father. Naruto and Itachi fought for roughly 30 minutes, with each of them having wounded the other, before they sensed Minato and a squad of Anbu coming towards the compound. Itachi told Sasuke that he wasn't worth killing, and if Sasuke wished to kill him, then he would need to hate and feel nothing but hate and acquire the same eyes as him, then ran off with Naruto deciding to stay in order to make sure Sasuke and Makoto were alright. Things were hard for a while after that because Sasuke had taken Itachi's words to heart and went from a happy little boy to a brooding emo, Makoto didn't know what to do. Seeing Makoto struggle with her son Naruto decided to help out, Naruto visited every chance he got in order to talk with Sasuke. There was no progress at first, but after a while Sasuke began to open up to Naruto, Naruto was able to convince Sasuke that if he wanted to kill Itachi for what he did, then that was fine, but he shouldn't do it out of hate, as hate would only get him so far. Makoto was extremely grateful for Naruto's help as she could see her son slowly letting go of his hate, she also noticed that Sasuke had started to look up to Naruto. One day after seeing Naruto training both Sakura and Naruko, he asked Naruto to train him as well, he had expected for Naruto to tell him that he didn't have time to train him as well, but he was greatly surprised when Naruto simply smiled and said sure. Now Sakura, Naruko, and Sasuke could almost always be seen together, they were like brothers and sisters. Naruto was really happy for this as Sasuke had helped scare off a few boys that wanted to date Sakura and Naruko, mostly Kiba and Yuzuka who just wouldn't take no for an answer. With today being team placements Naruto truly hoped that these three ended up on the same team as they worked so well together. He had already recommended them as a team to Minato, but he wasn't sure if Minato would listen. Guys that's enough training for now, come have breakfast before you head off to team placements. Said Naruto as the three young adults stopped training and followed Naruto into the house. In the house Naruto and the three young genin walked into the kitchen and found Mibuki cooking breakfast while looking as young as she did years ago, the only real difference was that even after she finished freest feeding Sakura, her freest hadn't shrunk back to their original size, not that he was complaining, he loved his wife the way she was, but he did enjoy playing with her larger freests. Sitting at the table was Naruto's second wife Yugao, wearing a simple pair of grey sweetpants and a dark purple short sleeve top, since she had the day off. Yugao was an Anbu captain, and she had started dating Naruto 14 years ago, they were married 3 years after they had started dating. Yugao would admit that the time she had to wait in order to start dating Naruto was torture for her, Naruto had suggested that she try to date someone else, but no other boys interested her. The very second she turned 17 she went to Naruto's house and asked him for a date, Naruto accepted, but since it was 12am they had to go on the date later in the day. It always embarrassed Yugao to remember just how eager she was to go on that date. Sitting next to Yugao was Kashina Uzumaki Namikaze wearing her usual attire. 
If you are wondering why she is in Naruto's house the reason is she and Minato are separated and she moved in with Naruto and his family two years ago. They separated because no matter what Kashina said or showed to Minato, he would do nothing about what the villagers were doing to Naruko, she couldn't take how he was treating their daughter, so she moved out while telling him that she wouldn't eat back until he could be a better father. They've tried to fix things, but every day it looks more and more like they'll get a divorce. Sitting across from Kashina is Mikoto Ichiha. Mikoto is a beautiful woman with fair skin, black eyes, long black with her bangs, roughly framing her cheeks and eyes, nicely toned legs, a plump and juicy ass, and deep cup priests. For clothes she wore a dark purple blouse, a red plump skirt, and black sandals. Makoto was at the Yuzumaki house simply because most of her friends were here and she knew her son would be here. Makoto was very grateful for everything Naruto had done for her and Sasuke, he had pretty much helped put their lives back together, he had even offered to let them stay with him so that they wouldn't have to be in that compound with all those bad memories. She thanked him for the offer but declined as she felt she didn't deserve his kindness. You see she knew why Itachi had killed their clan as she knew about the coup they were planning, she knew she should have said something as many innocent people would have died in the coup. She didn't say anything though because she was too conflicted on what to do, should she tell the Hokage about the coup or should she say nothing and help with the coup. In the end she did nothing as she didn't help with the coup and she didn't tell the Hokage, in truth she knew the coup wouldn't have succeeded simply because of one person, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto was so protective of those he cared about that Mikoto was sure that he would cut down a whole village just to protect one person that he cared about, and Fugaku's plan to win the coup relied on using one person that Naruto dearly cared about, his goddaughter Naruko. Mikoto knew that the moment Fugaku sent anyone after Naruko Naruto would cut them down without remorse, and then once he found out about the coup, the Ichiha clan wouldn't have stood a chance. Makoto had spent many days silently wishing that Naruto would stop being so kind to her, as her inability to do what was right would have caused so much suffering for so many people, and she knew Naruto would have never forgiven her if he ever found out that she had actually considered helping her clan and what it would have meant for Naruko. Everyone sat at the table while Naruto helped Mibuki serve everyone a plate. Once everyone was served Naruto sat at the head of the table with Mibuki next to him and everyone started to eat. So are you guys ready for team placements? Asked Naruto. Hell yeah. Said Sakura. Sakura, language. Said Mibuki. Honey, Sakura-chan is an adult now, so she is allowed to say such words. Said Naruto. I don't care if she is considered an adult, I taught her better than to use such language. Said Mibuki. Anyway, what team do you guys hope to be on? Asked Naruto. Well I for one wanted to be the three of us, but if that doesn't happen, then I should be fine, as long as I'm not on a team with Kiba. Said Naruko. Sasuke said Naruto with narrowed eyes as he thought about Kiba. He had caught the brat ogling not only Sakura and Naruko, but also Mibuki, Kishina, Mikoto, and a bunch of other women around the village with lustful eyes. Don't worry I'll make sure he keeps his hands to himself. Said Sasuke. And as far team placements go, I'd prefer being on a team with Naruko and Sakura, but as long as I'm not on a team with fangirls I'll be fine. Said Sasuke, him and Naruto shivered at the mere thought of fangirls. I'd also like for the three of us to be on a team, but just like Naruko if we aren't on the same team, then I should be fine as long as I'm not on a team with Kiba. Said Sakura. Naruto nodded at this before looking at Sasuke, who was drinking some orange juice. So Sasuke, have you asked Yakumo on a date yet? Asked Naruto. Sasuke quickly spitted out his juice before coughing and pounding his chest with his fist. What? No. Yelled Sasuke making everyone else lightly laugh at him. Why is it always the guys with the most fangirls that can't ask out their crush? Asked Naruto. Oh leave Sasuke-chan alone Narukoi, if I remember right you were the same way back in the academy. Said Mibuki. No I wasn't, I remember asking you out plenty of times while in the academy just like I remember you telling me no plenty of times. Said Naruto. You told daddy no mom? Asked Sakura. Well. I am. Um, said Mibuki. She sure did, in fact if I remember right the only reason she told him no was because she though boys liked it when you played hard to get. Said Kashina with a smirk. Kashina. Yelled Mibuki with her face being red from embarrassment. That's why you kept turning me down. Yelled Naruto in disbelief. Group started to laugh at the situation before calming down and finishing their breakfast. Well that was delicious as usual Mebu-chan, now if you excuse me I have to go as the Hokage has called me to his office. Said Naruto before he stood up and kissed Mibuki on the lips, then he did the same to Yugao before disappearing in a burst of speed. Speaking of going we really should be going too guys. Said Sakura with Naruko and Sasuke agreeing before they placed their dishes in the sink, said goodbye to their moms, and then left for the academy. Do you think they'll end up on the same team? Asked Mibuki. We can only hope as that would be one powerful team. 
I really hope they get a good sensei though as they'll hate it if their sensei doesn't train them as good as Naruto-kun trains them. Said Yugao. True, what do you think Minato wanted to see Naruto-kun about? Asked Kishina. I don't know, but I hope it's not a surprise mission again. Said Mikoto. Yeah the kids really don't like it when they come home and Naruto Koi is just gone. Said Mibuki. Hokage office. Naruto appeared in the Hokage office and immediately stood at attention with a straight face. You wanted to see me Hokage-sama. Said Naruto, he never called Minato by his name anymore. Naruto, I have two important things that I need from you for the good of the village. Said Minato as he laced his fingers in front of his face. What would that be Hokage-sama? Asked Naruto. The first thing I need is for you to be a team sensei. Said Minato. That is surprising Hokage-sama, but if you really want then I shall be a sensei, have you already picked my team, or do I get to pick? Asked Naruto. Teams have already been made and assigned with the senseis finding out about their teams in a bit. The second thing I need is much more long term I guess, Kumo is trying to form an alliance with us once again. Said Minato. Are you sure this is a good idea Hokage-sama, the last time we tried to form an alliance with them the Hugairis was almost taken. Said Naruto. That was the work of the Raikage's council, not the Raikage himself, and this time is different as this time it's a marriage contract. Said Minato. And you want me to be the one to marry someone from Kumo. Said Naruto already seeing where this was going. Actually the Raikage insisted that it be you, apparently you impressed a lot of Kumo ninja with your sword skills and the respect you showed your enemies. The Raikage and I have talked about this and have come to the agreement that you and whoever the Raikage puts in the contract will have dual citizenship, making them not only a member of Kumo, but also Konoha. We've also decided that the Raikage will send over 25 A rank lightning jutsu, well you will teach some gen in a bit of kinjutsu. Said Minato. Naruto sighed at this as he would have to explain this to Mibuki and Yugao. Very well Hokage-sama, will I at least get to meet this woman before I have to marry her? Asked Naruto. Yes you will as you don't have to marry her right away, you both have to actually spend some time together in each other's village. Said Minato. Naruto nodded at this before he sat down in order to wait to find out who will be his genin team. It didn't take long for the other Jonin senseis to show up consisting of Asuma Siratobi, Kurina Yuhi, Kakashi Hataki, and some random Jonin. Naruto's eyes scanned over the Jonin, and he became worried as he knew most of the random Jonin, Asuma, and Kakashi would be horrible teachers for Naruko and even Sasuke. All right now that all of you are here it's time to look in on the Jonin and find out your teams. Said Minato as he took out his crystal ball, but before he could activate it the clan heads came into his office. Honorable clan heads, what are you doing here? Asked Minato. We just wish to know what teams our children will be on Hokage-sama. Said Hiashi Huga. Hiashi had long brown hair, pale skin, and pale eyes like all Hugas. For clothes he simply wore cream-colored robes. Very well, watch closely everyone. Said Minato as he activated the crystal ball. The Academy. Baruko, Sakura, and Sasuke were in hell as they were surrounded by fanboys and fangirls, Kami, they couldn't wait for this to be over. The three quickly went to the back of the classroom in order to get to their usual seats. Hey Sakura-chan, Naruko-chan, how about both of you sit next to a real alpha? Said Kiba and Yuzuka. Kiba had lightly tanned skin, black slit pupils for eyes, and red fang markings on his cheeks. For clothes he wore black sandals, black pants, a black leather jacket, and his Konoha headband on his forehead. No thanks. Said Naruko and Sakura at the same time as they walked right past Kiba. Oh come on girls, I know your dad told you not to date while in the academy, but we're ninja now, besides you girls need a strong alpha male like me. Said Kiba. Hokage office. Did you really tell the girls that they couldn't date in the academy? Asked the Inuzuka clan head and Kiba's mother Tsum. Tsum was a beautiful woman with lightly tanned skin, wild brown hair, black slit pupils, red fang markings on her cheeks, dark purple lipstick on her lips, a nicely toned body, DD cup priests, and a large fur mass. For clothes she wore the standard Kanoha Jonin uniform. No, but I did tell them to not let boys get in the way of their training. If they found a boy that they liked and wanted to date I would support them, but if they started to slack in their training, then I would put an end to it. Said Naruto. The Academy. They said no Kiba, let it go. Said Sasuke. Naruko and Sakura were practically his sisters, and he was sick and tired of the horn dog of the Academy hitting on them. Just stay out of this you bastard, we all know you just want to keep Naruko and Sakura to yourself. Said Kiba with a growl. But not at all you idiot, I promised Naruto I'd keep perverts away from the girls, and you are clearly a pervert that I need to keep away from them. Said Sasuke. Alright boys calm down, there is no need to start a fight. For your information Kiba daddy never said Naruko and I couldn't date, we just didn't want to. 
And Sasuke we're thankful that you're looking out for us, but we can take care of ourselves. Said Sakura. Yeah thanks Sasuke, but we've got this. And Kiba Naruto kun isn't my dad, he's my godfather. Said Naruko. With that done the three sat in their seats and ignored Kiba. So forehead how are things at home? Asked Ino Yamanaka. Ino was a beautiful young woman with fair skin, pupil-less bright blue eyes, platinum blonde hair done in a ponytail with her bangs, framing the right side of her face and covering her right eye, a very curvy and toned body, long smooth legs, a plump ass, and deep cup freests. Her clothes she wore purple shinobi sandals, mesh armor on her knees, thighs and elbows, a knee-length purple apron skirt, a purple high-collared sleeveless blouse that exposed her midriff, and silver stud earrings. Shut up pig and things are fine at home, why do you want to know? Asked Sakura. Despite the name calling Ino and Sakura are actually pretty good friends. Well Sakura I just wanted to be sure about what situation I'll be in when I become your new stepmother. Said Ino. Would you stop saying that? Said Sakura. What? It's not my fault your dad is drop dead sexy, oh the things I plan to do to that man. Said Ino with a blush on her cheeks and a perverted smile. Okage office. I'll kill you. Yelled Inoichi Yamanaka, father of Ino Yamanaka. Inoichi pretty much looked like an older male version of Ino, and for clothes he wore the standard Kanoha Jonin uniform. Currently he is being held back from trying to kill Naruto by his closest and oldest friends, Shikaku Nara and Choza Akamichi. But I didn't do anything. Whined Naruto. Shut up, you shut your filthy mouth. Yelled Inoichi. The Academy. What the hell Ino don't talk about my daddy like that. How would you like it if I talked about doing perverted stuff with your dad? He's a handsome guy and I'm sure I can talk him into doing some things. Said Sakura though on the inside she felt disgusted with herself. Hokage office. I'll kill you, I'll kill you and eat your soul. Yelled Naruto. This time everyone including Minato and his hidden Anbu were holding back Naruto from getting to Inoichi. The scary part was even with everyone holding him back, Naruto was still slowly making his way towards Inoichi. Kurenai was blushing a bit as she could feel the muscles of his right arm flex in her grasp, Tsum on the other hand was grinning fearly as she purposely felt up Naruto's heart and sculpted chest. But, but I didn't do anything. Whined a now very pale Inoichi as he had just remembered who he was dealing with. This wasn't some hormonal teenage boy but Naruto fucking Uzumaki, Kanoha's crimson demon wind, the man known to kill hundreds of ninja, with no evidence of him being there other than a gust of wind and sprays of blood. The Academy. Nice try forehead, but we both know my dad isn't your type, so your little taunt won't work. Said Ino with a smug smirk. Damn it. Sakura thought to herself. Fine so he's not my type, it's still not cool for you to be talking about my daddy like that. Said Sakura. Oh please forehead, you say it like I'm the only one talking about him like that, well maybe I'm the only one talking about him like that to your face. I think you've forgotten that Hanada and Hanabi have been crushing on him for a long time now. Said Ino while pointing at the two girls. Anada was a very beautiful girl with very fair skin, pale lavender tinted eyes, waist length dark blue hair, a very voluptuous figure, thick eyes, wide hips, a narrow waist, a plump ass, and large DT cup freests. For clothes she wore blue shinobi sandals, dark blue pants, a heavy cream colored coat with fur around collar and on the cuffs, and her kanoha headband around her neck. Anabi is Hinata's twin sister, and also a beautiful girl with fair skin, pale eyes, long dark brown hair that went past her hips tied in a ponytail with a white ribbon with two shorter strands in the front with pink ribbons on the ends, her body was slim but nicely toned, she wasn't gifted in the chest area like her sister, as she had B-cup freests, long legs, a narrow waist. And her best asset was her thick and juicy ass, which was bigger than even Hinata's. For clothes she wore a long sleeve tan kimono with reddish orange flame designs on the cuffs, a matching knee-length skirt, and blue shinobi sandals. In fact Tanabi once said something about asking her father to set up a marriage contract with that tall drink of delicious man. Said Ino. Hanada was blushing bright red from having her feelings for Naruto talked about so openly. Hanabi on the other hand just smirked confidently as she wasn't ashamed or embarrassed by her feelings for Naruto. Hokage office. Everyone was waiting in order to have to stop Hiashi from trying to kill Naruto, well everyone except Tsum who was still feeling up Naruto, but they were surprised to find Hiashi looking like he was actually considering it. Hmm. I approve. Said Hiashi. The reason for Hiashi approved of this was because Naruto was good friends with his deceased wife Hitomi, due to them being on the same genin team. When Hitomi died after giving birth to their second daughter, he had started acting very harsh and cold to Hinata, due to her reminding him so much of Hitomi, that changed though when Naruto found out and literally knocked some sense into him. 
After that he Ashi apologized to his daughter and started being a real father to her, he saw that his positive attitude towards Hinata made a great difference as her skills greatly improved, but the damage was done as most of the clan still saw Hinata as a failure. In Hiashi's mind Naruto was possibly the only man worthy of his daughters. The Academy. Before anyone could respond to what Ino had said their sensei Aruka walked into the classroom. The genin quieted down as Aruka went into a long and boring speech about their new lives as genin of Konoha, even the people in the Hokage office, were fighting off falling asleep. Alright now let's get to team placements, team 1 will be. Team 7 will be Sasuke Ichiha, Yakumo Kurama, and Sai, will your jonin sensei will be Kakashi Hataki. Team 8 will be Hinata Hyuga, Kiba Inuzuka, and Shino Aburami, will your jonin sensei will be Kurina Yuhi. Team 9 is still in circulation from last year, so Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choji Akimichi, while your Jonin sensei will be Asuma Suratobi. And finally we have Team 11, which will be Naruko Uzumaki Namikaze, Sakura Uzumaki, and Hanabi Hyuga, while your Jonin sensei will be Naruto Uzumaki. Said Aruka. The reactions to team placements varied, the boys were upset on about not being on the same team as the class hotties which consisted of Naruko, Sakura, Hinata, Hanabi, Yakumo, and Ino. The girls were upset at either not being on the same team as Sasuke or at not having Naruto as their sensei. Dibba was glad he at least got to be on a team with Hinata, and from the sound of his sensei's name, he guessed that it was a woman, he hoped she was hot. Sasuke blushed a bit at being on the same team as his crush, but quickly hit it. Yakumo blushed as well since she too had a crush on Sasuke, but never said anything. Naruko and Sakura were happy that they were on the same team, and under Naruto, they both also smirked when they noticed Sasuke was on a team with his crush, while also noticing the small blush on Sasuke's cheeks. Hinata was happy to be on her older sister figure's team, she was nervous about being on a team with Kiba, and she was jealous that her sister got to be on Naruto's team. The Nabi was very happy to be on Naruto's team, as now she could put her plan in motion in order to get his attention and maybe play a game of sexy teacher and naughty student. This isn't fair, how come forehead gets the super sexy sensei? Asked Ino as she stood up from her seat. Aruka sighed at this but answered the question anyway. Look Ino, Hokage-sama made these teams so if you have a problem with them, then you can take it up with him. Said Aruka. Ino grumbled at this as she sat back down in her seat. Now then your senseis will be here in half an hour to come get you, good luck in your new lives class. Said Aruka before walking out. Half an hour later the senseis for the team started to come in to get their teams. The mate you'll be coming with me. Said Kurunai Yuhi. Kurunai was a beautiful woman with fair skin, long untamed black hair, exotic red eyes with purple eyeshadow, a slim but toned figure, a toned ass, and deep cup priests. Her clothes she wore black shinobi sandals, bandages wrapped around her thighs, a white battle dress that had the appearance of being made of bandages with thick black lines with thorn designs, a long red sleeve onto the right, bandages that wrapped around her hands and forearms, and her headband on her forehead. Teammate got up and left with her. Team 10 you'll be with me. Said Asuma Suratobi. Asuma was a rather tall man with tan skin, dark eyes, and black hair with a matching beard. For clothes he wore the standard jonin uniform. Team 10 got up and left with him. It was then that Naruto walked into the room with a large smile on his face. Hey everyone I'm here for Team 11. Said Naruto. Naruko, Sakura and Hanabi went up to him and he told them to meet him on the roof as he had something to do that would only take a minute, they nodded and did as he said. Hey Yakumo-chan, how have you been? Asked Naruto. Yakumo was a beautiful young woman with fair skin, light brown eyes, long brown hair that was straight on one side, while the other side was braided, an athletic but feminine figure, and cup priests. For clothes she wore orange sandals, violet baggy pants, a pink kimono top held closed by a red sash, and her headband was around her forehead. Yakumo smiled softly at Naruto. Hey Naruto-sensei, I'm doing well since I'm still doing those exercises you showed me. Said Yakumo before she frowned a bit. Yakumo had been born with a rather weak body, so it was thought that she couldn't be a ninja, she wanted to prove them wrong and wanted to become a ninja using pure game jutsu. It was later that she met Kurina Yuhi, who trained her in Gain Jutsu and Naruto Uzumaki, that helped her with her body, with the both of their help Yakumo was able to become a ninja. What's with the sad face Yakumo-chan? Asked Naruto. Kurinai sensei didn't say a word to me when she came to get her team, did I do something to upset her? Asked Yakumo. Yakumo then felt a hand on her head and looked up to see Naruto smiling at her. You didn't do anything Yakumo-chan, you have to remember that while well, she did teach you this is her first time teaching a team. Kurchan just wanted to appear professional and to make a good first impression, I'm sure that once she's done with her team she'll come and talk to you. Said Naruto. Are you sure? Asked Yakumo. Yeah I'm sure, you know before we got here she was really worried about you. 
She kept going on and on that you should be on her team because she could help you better with your training. I got her to calm down though and told her that we have to let our children grow up and leave the nest sometime. She punched me in the arm for that. Said Naruto not mentioning that she had also blushed from his words. You deserve it, I did that one time when I was younger and you won't let it go. Said Yakuma with her cheeks being bright red. She had called Naruto and Kurenai mommy and daddy when she was younger by accident and Naruto would always tease her about it. Hey, <laughs> well I should really be going so I don't keep my team waiting for too long. I suggest you guys find something to do because your sensei is going to be really, really, late. Hey Sasuke this will give you time to ask out this pretty girl. Said Naruto with a large smile. Get out of here you baka. Yelled Sasuke with his entire face being bright red. Ha <laughs> Laughed Naruto before he disappeared in a burst of speed. On the roof. Naruto appeared in front of his new gen and team. Alright guys sorry for the delay, but I'm here now so let's get into introductions. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like Raymond, my family, my friends, and cheetahs. I dislike rapists, child abusers, those that insult my family, those who hurt my friends, and waiting for Raymond. My hobbies include training, spending time with my friends, and spending time with my family. My dreams for the future is to grow my family even bigger than it currently is and to see all of you succeed as ninja. Now who wants to go next? Asked Naruto. I'll go next, my name Naruko Uzumaki. I like most of my family, my friends, and Raymond. I dislike rapists, deadbeat dads, people who judge me before getting to know me and waiting for Raymond. My hobbies are training, hanging with my friends, hanging with my family, and tasting different kinds of Raymond. My dream for the future is to have a large family and to become Hokage. Said Naruko purposely leaving out the Namikaze part of her name. I'll go next, my name is Sakura Uzumaki. I like my friend, my family, Raymond, and a certain someone. My dislikes are pretty much the same as Naruko's. My hobbies include training, spending time with my friends and family, cooking, and learning medical ninjutsu. My dreams for the future is to have a large family and to become a doctor under Tsunade-sama. Said Sakura. Naruto's eye twitched at the certain someone part. And finally the best for last, my name is Hanabi Hyuga. My likes are my sister, my father, honey buns and a certain someone. My dislikes are rapists, the cage bird seal, and those that make fun of my eyes. My hobbies include training and spending time with my sister. As for my dreams for the future well, other than marrying a certain someone I haven't really thought about it. Said Hanabi. Very good everyone, but this is the part where I have to tell you that you aren't genin just yet, the test you did in the academy was just to see who had the potential to become genin. Your true genin test will be tomorrow so meet me then at training ground 11 at 7 am said Naruto. Yes, sensei. Said Naruko, Sakura and Hanabi, though they weren't happy that they had yet another test to do. Well Naruto, Yugao, and the kids were out Kishina and Mabuki were busy making dinner for when everyone got home. Hey Kishina can I ask you a question? Asked Mabuki. Uh, oh sure go ahead. Said Kishina. There really isn't gentle way to ask this so I'm going to just come out and ask. Why haven't you divorced Minato yet? Asked Mibuki. Kishina stopped what she was doing and just held her head down for a while not saying a thing. Mibuki knew this was probably a sore subject for Kishina, so she waited patiently for an answer, showing that she was willing to let Kishina collect her thoughts but wasn't willing to let this go. To be honest with you I've already had the papers drawn up and I'm ready to send them to the daimyo, but this thought just keeps entering my head. My family is gone and I only have this little family that I've made myself left, I can't just break that up, I should be doing everything I can to keep my family together. Said Kashina. Oh Kashina, you shouldn't be worried about that as you still have family and it is growing. You have me, Naruto-kun, Yugao, Tsunade, Naruko-chan, and Sakura-chan, I'm not done having children, so you have more Uzumaki babies to look forward to, then once Yugao is ready to have children there will be even more, and then there are still plenty of women after Naruto-kun. Plus you know Naruto-kun is still looking for any Uzumaki survivors, Naruto-kun wanted to surprise you with this himself, but you should know that he's found a lead on in Uzumaki in the Hidden Grass Village. Said Mibuki. Kashina was greatly surprised by this, but gave a large smile, Mibuki was right, she did still have family, and it would get bigger as time went on, and of course Naruto was looking for other Uzumaki. Kashina pulled Mibuki into a hug and thanked her. Thank you Mibuki-chan, for reminding me of everything that I still have and will have in the future. Said Kashina. No problem Kashina-chan, now come on and help me with dinner. Said Mibuki. A few minutes later they heard the door open and in walked Naruto, Sakura, and Naruko. Hey ladies, we're home said Naruto. We're in the kitchen Narukoi. Said Mibuki. Naruto walked into the kitchen and kissed Mibuki deeply. Hmm, nice to see you too. So what did Hokage-sama want with you? Asked Mibuki. 
Well two things really, first he made me into a jonin sensei with Sakura-chan, Naruko-chan, and Hanabi-chan on my team. The other thing is that apparently Kumo wants to try and form an alliance again, but this time through a marriage between me and Akumo Kanoichi. Said Naruto. What? Yelled Mibuki, Kishina, Sakura, and Naruko. Yeah, apparently my soon-to-be wife will be coming to the village at some point in time, so that we can get to know each other before we get married. After that I'll have to go to Kumo for some time in order to train some genin in kenjutsu. Said Naruto. Why does it have to be you? Asked Mibuki. Because apparently I have gained the respect of Kumo Shinobi due to my sword skills and the respect I showed even my enemies during the war. Said Naruto. Figures your kindness got you into a situation like this. Said Kishina. Let's go train in the backyard Naruko, I need to blow off some steam. Said Sakura. Right behind you. Said Naruko as she walked after Sakura. Before anything else could be said there was a knock at the door. I'll get it. Said Naruto as walked to the front door and opened it. Oh hey Makoto-chan, what are you doing here? Asked Naruto. Hey Naruto-kun, I came because Sasuke hasn't come home yet, so I guessed he would be here training, I also just needed to get out of Ichiha compound. Said Makoto. Naruto frowned at this as he could easily tell why she would want to get away from that compound, and to be honest, he was tired of seeing her by tortured by the memories that place held for her. Well Sasuke is not here, he got Kakashi as his jonin sensei, so we won't be seeing him for a while. Now you're going to come with me so that we can pack all of your and Sasuke's stuff and move it here, you're both officially moving into the Uzumaki compound. Said Naruto. Naruto. Dot you can't be serious, we can't just move in with you. Said Mikoto in surprise. Of course you can now come on. Said Naruto. But said Mikoto before she was cut off. No buts, now come on or I'll have to pack all of your stuff myself. Meaning I'll be seeing all of your underwear and everything you might have hidden in your room. Said Naruto with a smirk. Makoto blushed brightly at this as there were things in her room that she really didn't want Naruto to see. Fine. Said Makoto while lowering her head in defeat. I thought so. Said Naruto. Mebu-chan, Kishina-chan, I'm going with Makoto-chan to help pack up her thing so she and Sasuke can move in with us. Called out Naruto. Okay, Naruto-kun. Called Mibuki and Kishina from the kitchen, both of them expected this to happen sooner or later. Three hours later. Sasuke walked into the Uzumaki compound while holding a small cheetah cub that was sent by Naruto to bring Sasuke to the compound, once he was done with his team, the cub dispelled as soon as Sasuke walked through the door. The first thing he saw after walking into the house was Naruto sitting on the couch, he could hear Kishina and Mibuki in the kitchen making dinner, and he could guess that Naruko and Sakura were either in their rooms or training in the back. Hey Sasuke, finally done with Kakashi I see. Said Naruto. Sasuke's eyebrow twitched at this because if he was honest Yakumo was the best part of his whole experience. Yeah I'm done I do have to see him tomorrow for the real test. Said Sasuke. Well here is my advice, go two hours later than whatever time he told you to show up. Oh and your mom is down the hall setting up your room so you should go help her. Said Naruto. What? Asked Sasuke with a blink. Oh yeah, you two live here now so go help your mother and then get ready to eat dinner. Said Naruto. Okay. Said Sasuke in shock before he walked off. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle at Sasuke's response before going back to waiting for lunch to be ready while thinking of training for his team. Later that night everyone was sitting at the table for dinner, Sasuke was finally out of his shock about moving in so suddenly. So Sasuke how was your team meeting? Asked Mikoto. It sucked, Kakashi-sensei kept us waiting, Sai kept talking about my beep, when we did introductions Kakashi-sensei gave us stupid names, we didn't learn anything but his name, and he kept reading that book about smut. Said Sasuke. Yeah Kakashi can be annoying like that, but since you didn't say anything about Yakumo-chan I'm guessing she was the only one you enjoyed on the team. Said Naruto with a smirk. Sasuke blushed brightly and kept his head down at Naruto's words. This caused Naruko and Sakura to smirk as they were totally going to tease him about this. Makoto, Kishina, Mibuki and Yugao all smiled at Sasuke and hoped he asked Yukumo out soon. Well anyway you three should be getting to bed soon since you have an important day tomorrow. Said Naruto. But M-O-N-T-H later, that's right I'm skipping the test, you'll have to wait to see their awesome skills. Naruto was currently walking towards the Hokage Tower after being called there, and while he was doing that he was thinking about how things have gone with his team over the last month. They had passed the true genin test with flying colors and have been training very hard with him, training was what they did most of the time, since Naruto refused to do D-rank mission. One reason was because he felt those missions should have been given during the academy, and another reason was because he didn't trust the villagers to treat Naruko fairly if they found out she accepted one of their little chores. While walking he was also thinking about how much his team has grown with intense training. 
Sakura has greatly improved her tojutsu, she improved her ability with her chains, she learned a few more ninjutsu when she learned she had a dual affinity for earth and lightning, and she's been learning some medical ninjutsu from Tsunade. Naruto was a little sad that she didn't get his wind affinity, but he was proud that she was getting so strong, he was also proud that she didn't allow what other people expected of her to dictate who she was. A lot of people thought she would be just like him, but that wasn't the case, and he was fine with that. Naruko on the other hand was a lot like him, she had a wind affinity, she loved kinjutsu, she was a chakra powerhouse, and she preferred speed. In fact the only things keeping people from thinking that she was actually Naruto's daughter was her blonde hair, blue eyes, and the fact that she couldn't use the Uzumaki adamantine ceiling chains. She was disappointed about this, but everyone comforted her about it and reminded her that she did have the Uzumaki chakra, regeneration, and sensory skills. When it came to Hanabi he had to actually get Hiashi's permission to teach her anything, which Hiashi gladly granted, since he was one of the few main family members who didn't believe that the gentle fist was perfect. Due to Hanabi having an earth affinity, he had to ask Mabuki and Tsunade for advice on training, since he had an affinity for wind and lightning. As of right now Hanabi knew a couple of earth-style ninjutsu and was working on a way to add her affinity to her gentle fist. While each of his students were becoming powerful on their own, it was their teamwork that was truly impressive. When they worked together they could actually make him get at least a little serious, he had no doubt that on their own each of them could at least take on a chunin, but as a team, they could give a seasoned jonin some serious trouble. Naruto just couldn't help the pride he felt in his team. He frowned though when he thought about Sasuke, according to him, Kakashi hasn't been the best sensei. Apparently other than having them do tier rank missions all he's really had them do was teamwork exercises, it was to the point that Sasuke and Yakumo actually came to him, or Kurenai in Yakumo's case, for training. When he asked why Sai didn't come and ask for training, Sasuke told him that he believed that Sai was actually stronger than what he was showing. Naruto knew that it was normal for Genin to hold back sometimes in order to keep people guessing about how strong they were, but for some reason his gut was telling him that something fishy was going on, and he always trusted his gut. Another thing that made him smile and frown was that he had followed up on that lead in grass country and actually found an Uzumaki by the name of Karen. That made him smile, but what made him frown was remembering the bite marks he saw on her arms and chest, those bite marks meant she had the Uzumaki ability to heal others by letting them consume her chakra, and judging by the sheer number of bite marks the village had really been making use of Karen's ability. He became downright pissed when he learned that her mother had the same ability, and the village had forced her to overuse it, thus causing her death, they then moved her mother's duties onto her. After learning that Naruto had walked right up to the village leader and told the leader that he was taking Karen with him, and if the leader or any of his people even breathed in Karen's direction again he would come back and slaughter the entire village, yeah he was that protective. He smiled when he remembered how happy Karen was when he got rid of her bite marks by infusing her with his own chakra, and how happy Kashina was when he brought Karen home, showing her that there were in fact Uzumaki out in the world. As of right now Karen was a genin, since she was a genin in grass, and was apprenticed under Shizune, since Karen felt she was more of a support type. Naruto came out of his thoughts and found himself in front of the Hokage's door. Taking a deep breath he knocked on the door and entered into when he was given permission. In the office Naruto saw Minato sitting behind his desk as usual, but sitting in front of his desk was someone new. Said new person was a young woman with dark skin, green eyes, light gray hair done in a bun with two bangs that fall on either side of her face, full pouty lips, a slender build, nicely toned legs, wide hips, a firm ass, a narrowed waist, and perky D-cup friests. Her clothes she wore a very formal dark green long-sleeved and high-collared dress shirt that showed a little bit of cleavage, a matching dress skirt, black sandals, and long earrings. Naruto honestly thought that she was a very beautiful woman. I'm here as you asked Hokage-sama, is there something I can help you with? Asked Naruto though he was pretty sure he knew why he was here. Yes, I called you here in order to introduce you to the Kinoichi that Kumo has chosen to marry you. Said Minato before he gestured to the woman who stood up. Greetings Naruto-sama, my name is Mabui, and it is an honor to meet you. Said the now named Mabui as she bowed to him. The honor is all mine Mabui-san, and please do not address me as Sama or bow to me, if we truly are to be married, then I can't have my future wife being so formal with me. Besides my current wives aren't formal with me unless they need to be. Said Naruto with a smile. Mabui smiled a little herself at this, as while she was generally a very formal person she was glad her husband to be at least wasn't going to treat her like a servant or anything. Very well, I look forward to getting to know you Naruto-san. Said Mabui. And I you Mabui-san said Naruto. Naruto, in the interest of you and Mabui-san getting to know each other better, she will be living with you at the Uzumaki compound, accompanying you to your team training and on missions, when you finally take one anyway. Said Minato. 
That is perfectly fine Hokage-sama, and just let me know when a bandit camp extermination mission comes up and my team and I will accept it. Said Naruto. Very well, you're both dismissed. Said Minato. Naruto and Mabui bowed to Minato before leaving the office. While walking through the streets of Konoha beside Naruto, Mabui couldn't help but look around and be impressed by Konoha's beauty. She also kept taking glances at Naruto, as she could see that the rumors of his handsomeness that were passed around by the Kinoichi of Kumo were not exaggerated, though what she really hoped was true was the rumors of his kindness and his respect for others. Not to mention his skill since everyone knew that power was attractive. She also noticed a lot of the men were gawking at her, she guessed it was she was an exotic beauty so to speak, since Konoha didn't have a lot of dark-skinned people. So you have a genin team Naruto-san? Asked Mabui. Yes I do, it was a surprise for me as I wasn't expecting to be made into a jonin sensei, but I must say that I'm proud of my team. Said Naruto. I see but from what I heard in the Hokage's office, it seems like you haven't done any missions with them yet, why is that? Asked Mabui. Simple really, D-rank missions are chores that are supposed to teach genin how to work together before going out on higher rank missions. I personally believe that D-rank missions should be given out in the academy so that our genin develop the ability to work together before they even become official genin, but since we don't do that I've decided that I would simply not have my team perform D-rank missions and instead spend that time training. I've also decided that our first mission would be a bandit camp one so that I can get them blooded so that they won't freeze up on future missions. Said Naruto. Mabui nodded as the things Naruto was saying made a lot of sense. She might actually suggest some of this to the Raikage when they head to Kumo in a few months' time. I look forward to meeting your team Naruto-san. Said Mabui. I'm glad as we're actually going to meet up with them now since they have training in a few minutes. Said Naruto. Really? I thought I'd be meeting your other wives first. Said Mabui. Yu-chan is busy with work right now, and Mebu-chan is out with her friends, so I doubt you'd be able to meet them now anyway. Besides I promised my team some special training today. Said Naruto. Training Ground 10. When they arrived at training ground 10 they found Naruto's team waiting for them. Mabui stiffened a bit when she saw that there was a Hyuga on his team, she didn't know how the girl would react to her. Hey team, I'd like all of you to meet Mabui from Kumo. I've told all of you about in situation so I'm sure you can all guess who she is. Said Naruto. The girls nodded at this before they gave a small bow to Mabui. It's nice to meet you Mabui-san. Said the girls as one. It is nice to meet you all as well, may I please know your names? Asked Mabui as she returned the bow. I'm Sakura Yuzumaki. Said Sakura. I'm Naruko Yuzumaki. Said Naruko. And I'm Hanabi Hyuga. Said Hanabi. Alright team let's go ahead and get started on our warm up, 30 laps around the training ground, 200 push ups, 200 sit ups, 200 pull ups, 200 squats, 300 punches with each arm, and 300 kicks with each leg. Said Naruto. Mabui looked at Naruto with wide eyes at the fact that he considered that a warm-up, her eyes only got wider when she saw the genin just start on it like it was an everyday thing. Once the genin were done with that Naruto made three shadow clones and told the girls to take one and have a 30-minute spar with it while standing on top of the nearby pond, he also told them that they were only allowed to use tojutsu. Mabui watched carefully as the girls all walked onto the pond and started sparring with the clone they had chosen, and she was a little impressed, while true most genin in Kumo were learning how to walk on water by now, not all of them had the focus needed to fight while standing on it. She didn't know anything about the shadow clone jutsu, but she guessed that since it wasn't just an illusion, then it was similar to lightning, water, and earth clones, meaning that they had a fraction of the creator's power. As she the three genin spar against the cones she could say she was honestly impressed by their skills, it was clear that Naruto trained them well. Once time was up Naruto dispelled the clones and had his genin gather in front of him. Great work girls, I can really see your improvement, but now it's time for that special training I promised. Today I'd going to be teaching you three the summoning jutsu. Said Naruto. Alright. Cheered the three genin. They knew that the summoning jutsu was a very useful and powerful technique and they couldn't wait to learn it. Now calm down you three, this isn't like other techniques. You will essentially be making a contract with other living beings that will aid you in battle. You must show them the respect they deserve or else they will terminate the contract you have with them or simply refuse to help you should you summon them. Now let me be more specific about what's going to happen here, I'm simply going to show you the hand seals for the summoning jutsu and help you memorize them, you will not actually be summoning anything today. Said Naruto. Why not Naruto sensei? Asked Sakura. Because the summoning jutsu can be very dangerous if you aren't prepared for it and none of you have contracts. 
If you try the summoning jutsu without a contract, then you will be taken the summoning realm of an animal best suited for you, but the problem is that if you accidentally insult a summon while in their realm, then it's possible that they will kill you. Said Naruto letting that sink in. Sakura, I've talked to Tsunade about this, and she says that if you want to you can sign the slug contract, Hanabi, Naruko, I'd be more than happy to let either of you sign the cheetah contract if you want. Just think about it. Said Naruto. But that out of the way Naruto taught them the hand seals for the summoning jutsu, and had them continue to practice the seals until he was sure they had them down. Once they had it down they were happy that they now knew a jutsu that could be useful in the future, but they were a bit disappointed that it wasn't something that they could use now. Naruto noticed this and smirked at them. I hope you girls didn't think that was all we were doing today, if you did well you were very wrong. As of now I'm going to be stepping up your training by teaching all of you to use weapons other than the basic kunai, shuriken, senbon, and etc said Naruto before pulling out three scrolls and tossing them to the genin. Sakura unsealed her weapon first and found that inside the scroll was a large double-sided battle axe, with the blades being black with a silver edge and Sakura petals running along them, and the staff was dark brown, four feet long, and had a steel spike butt cap. Looking closely at the battle axe Sakura saw many seals on the blade and on the staff, she also noticed that it was actually rather heavy, so she would need to up her strength to use it properly, but she was excited about using it. You noticed? Said Sakura with a smile. Of course I noticed, you may be my daughter, and I've been teaching you kinjutsu for years now, but I've noticed that a sword just isn't you. Said Naruto with a smile. Naruko unsealed her weapon, and that inside the scroll were two katanas with black sheaths, golden circular guards, red silk wraps on the handles, and gold butt caps. Unsheathing both swords Naruko found that the first one had a black blade with a gold edge and a gold dragon design along the flat side of the blade. A second sword had a gold blade with a black edge and a black tiger design on the flat side of the blade. Just like Sakura Naruko could see that each blade had a number of seals on them. Naruko looked at the blades in awe for a few moments before looking at Naruto. They're beautiful Naruto-sensei, but why did you give me two? Asked Naruko. I noticed while training you that you can use a sword in either hand, and you looked a little uncomfortable holding only one sword. I figured that you were a natural dual wielder, well I personally never learned to dual wield, I'm sure other Yuzumaki have, so we probably have some scrolls on it. Said Naruto. Finally Hanabi unsealed her weapon and found that inside of the scroll was a beautiful pair of silver gauntlets and greaves that had large blades attached to them, three on each gauntlet and two on each greave, along with the kanji for firecracker on both of the wrist and ankle guards. Hanabi was greatly surprised by the weapon, she honestly thought she would get something like say. Though now that she thought about it, it actually made sense to give her a weapon like this, she specialized in the gentle fist which was fast and delivered devastating hits. These claws were the same in that they were a close-range weapon that was fast and delivered deadly strikes with every attack. Just like Naruko and Sakura Hanabi could see seal on her claws, meaning that Naruto put just as much thought into her weapon as he did the others. I'm pretty sure you can guess why I gave you these claws. I know the Hyuga don't use weapons outside of the basic, with this probably making you the first, but I wanted you to have these even if you don't use them. Said Naruto. I'd love to use them, thank you Naruto-sensei. Said Hanabi with a bow. Thank you Naruto-sensei. Said Naruko and Sakura as they two bowed to him. Think nothing of it girls, now then we'll spend the next two hours practicing with your new weapons, so that you can get used to them and start on the basic kantas for your weapons. After that we'll continue your elemental chakra control exercises, so let's get started. Said Naruto. Yes, Naruto-sensei. Said the girls together before they started on their training. Mabui watched all of this with a smile on her face, as she could tell that Naruto was truly preparing his genin for ninja life. She looked forward to getting to know him even further, but she would gladly admit that he's already made a great first impression. Hmm, Mabui Uzumaki, that actually does have a nice ring to it. Mabui thought to herself. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends, and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.